The city of Denver is going to be limiting how long migrants can stay in shelters as the border crisis continues to drain its resources. Over the past year, tens of thousands of migrants have arrived in the Mile High City, costing the city big. Migrants have already racked up $10 million in unpaid medical bills, draining the city's safety net, hospitals, resources, and Denver Public Schools uh, has enrolled more than 3,000 immigrant children since last July, and that's also putting an extra strain on teachers. Denver's mayor, Mike Johnson, estimates the city will need more than $100 million to help pay for housing, schooling, health care, and other services this year alone. So joining me now is John Ewing from Denver Human Services. John, thank you so much for giving us some of your time. What is happening in your city right now when it comes to the migrant influx? Thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, we've seen nearly 40,000 people over the last uh, year or so. We have 4,000 people in shelter now, many of them families. Uh, we've always had some kind of a length of stay policy for it, uh, people, but we paused um, our discharges for families in mid-November. We had lower arrival numbers at the time. And, and then about a month later, we just saw the numbers skyrocket. Uh, the numbers are down right now a little bit, which is great. It gives us a little bit of uh, breathing room to work with the families we have. So right now we're working with the families we have to try and get them into housing or maybe into a situation uh, that makes sense for them. Uh, a lot of them aren't authorized to work in this country. They're not even eligible for work authorization in this country. So we're we're trying to find something that makes sense for them, whether that means staying here or means stay, uh, going to um, another city. You know, and John, Chicago is also limiting the time migrants can stay in shelters, but that deadline has already been pushed back twice. Will the same thing mm -hmm. happen in Denver? Um, not at this time. No, we're, we uh, spent several weeks, if not several months at this point, trying to figure out what would be the best possible method for us to uh, roll this policy back out. We have changed um, the, the times and the stays uh, over uh, the last year, just trying to make sense of what makes sense in the situation at the moment. It used to be 37 days for families. Now it's 42, six weeks, trying to give them a little extra time to work with us so we can get them into a situation that's better for them. Um, you know, we always try to educate folks and we try to explain to them, you know, we have limited resources, very limited resources. We're going to try and help you. We also, though, have to tell them, listen, this city is very expensive. It's a very um, unaffordable city to be uh, to live in. If you've ever lived here, any reviewers know that. Um, so we sometimes have to tell them, hey, not everywhere in the U.S. is like this. There are places that are less expensive that maybe you'll have better luck finding a job, but it is very difficult. Yeah, and I know something that, uh, you know, Chicago officials have pointed to the weather, it gets cold, but I mean, there are also underlying reasons, because realistically, where are all of these migrants supposed to go? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. Um, it's it's very difficult. I mean, one of the main obstacles that we run into is, is not um, an issue of who has the resources because no one has the resources. The issue we run into is that they can't support themselves because they're not authorized to work, or at least a large number of them are not authorized to work. And so we've continued to call on the federal government to expand that work authorization so they can get a job, they can work, they can provide for themselves. Right now, if you drive through Denver, you'll see people working, squeegee workers, you'll see them out shoveling snow. Um, the lucky ones are finding construction jobs, which is good, but there's not enough of those jobs for everyone. So it's incredibly challenging right now. We know there are cities out there who would love to have them if they were authorized to work. So right now we're working through legal clinics, work clinics for the ones who, who may be eligible for that to try and get them on their way to a better spot. And John, what would you say the city of Denver needs most right now from the federal government? Is it that work authorization expansion? Work authorization um, money. You know, we've seen, you know, the president's supplemental budget plan have $1.4 billion in it for cities like Denver, for like cities, New York, Chicago, who are really bearing the brunt of this response right now. We really need that finance. You mentioned it off the top, $100 million. It could go up to $180 million with our current projections. That's 10 to 15 percent of Denver's annual budget, you know, that we could be allotting here. So we're already telling agencies to tighten their belts. We're already telling them to, to, to think about um all of those circumstances. So it's very challenging right now. We also need federal coordination. We need to ensure that there's real coordination when people are coming across the border, that we know where they're going, where, that we know where they're going uh, in a smart way. Right now, it's essentially the state of Texas that is deciding coordination of where many number, uh, a large number of these individuals are going. All right, John Ewing from Denver Human Services. Thank you. We appreciate it.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.